Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the electrical birth and nursing management. But before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. But first, let's have the intro. <laughs> is a damage to the skin or internal organs when a person comes into direct contact with an electrical current. The injuries due to electrical currents form a small but important section of all burning accidents. They have certain features which distinguish them from thermal burns and which have an important bearing on prognosis and treatment. Electrical burns actually happens when the passage of electricity through the body tissue, which considers to be delicate as a process of injury, is rapid and there is a direct damage. So this means that there is a subdermal damage that is significant greater than the superficial injury and results to internal tissue damage. The extent of the injury is actually determined by current, wherein if there is a higher current, there is an increased lethality and tissue damage also. Moreover, the voltage, wherein the higher the voltage, there is a higher damage to the body. Also, if there is an increased voltage, there is a dielectric breakdown of the skin, resulting to lowered resistance to the tissues and greater current flows, turning the skin to necrosis. The next one is the frequency. If there is a high frequency level, the tissue burning happens but it doesn't penetrate deep enough to affect the heart. The next one is the duration. In here, the longer the duration of exposure, the more tissue damage. And the last one is the pathway. If the current flows through the heart, it is lethal and causing cardiac issues. That may lead to cardiac arrest or worse patient death. So the damage is due to the passage of electricity through the tissues and the extent and severity of the damage depends on the strength of the current and the time for which contact is maintained. The voltage is dependent on the nature of the supply of electricity. Note that the large fluid content of tissues, particularly of the blood plasma and interstitial fluid, makes the interior of the body an excellent conductor. And the main variability of resistance lies in the skin and in the nature of its contact with the source of electricity. Thus, wet skin in firm contact with source will allow more current to pass than the dry skin in light contact. In addition, the electric current can cause injury in four ways. Number one, the electrical effect on the heart may cause cardiac arrest. Number two, current passing through the body may cause muscle, nerve, and tissue destruction. The third one is that the contact with electrical source may cause thermal burns and falling or an injury after a contact with electricity. The causes of electrical injury can be caused by accidents, flashing of electric arcs, lightning, and others. Note that the human body conducts electricity very well. That means that electricity passes very easily throughout the body. The direct contact with electrical current can be deadly. While some electrical burns look like minor, there are still maybe serious internal damage, especially to the heart, to the muscle, or brain. So what are the signs and symptoms of electrical burn? Actually, symptoms depends on many things. That includes the types and strength of the voltage, how long you were in contact with electricity, or we are speaking about the duration, how long the electricity moved through your body, and your overall health as a person. To discuss briefly the signs and symptoms, this includes musculoskeletal problem, cardiovascular system error, nervous system issues, and respiratory concerns. Here in the musculoskeletal problem, you know that burns, especially in the thermal burns, really affect the skin and the musculoskeletal. And the problem here in the electrical is that the skin is 
burn but the burning happens inside the body first okay it is not easily to be identified but a patient will suffer from muscle spasms and pain the next one is the electrical burns is fatal to the heart because of the conduction pathway so the patient may suffer from irregular heartbeat or worse heart attack the patient may also suffer from problem in consciousness level headache numbness or tingling and seizures and this all seen in the nervous system meanwhile here in the respiratory system the patient may suffer from breathing problems or already a lung failure especially if it is extensive burns the patient may also suffer from a problem with hearing or vision and a problem with swallowing the pathophysiology of burn will be discussed on the next videos as mentioned earlier the electrical burn have a certain features which which distinguish them from thermal burns and which have an important bearing on prognosis and treatment. Here in the electrical burn, there is a cutaneous burns here in the musculoskeletal system, causing the muscle and soft tissue damage that may be extensive, particularly in high voltage electrical injuries. The alternating current is more dangerous than the direct current because it is associated with cardiopulmonary arrest, fibrillation, tetanic muscle contractions, and lung bone or vertebral fractures. So it affects the musculoskeletal, the heart, the nervous system, and of course the respiratory system. How are we going to manage electrical burns? We need to consider debridement of non-viable tissue, then we are going to repeat it every two days. And also, you need to monitor any cardiac complications because the patient may develop an irregular heartbeat which may be caused by some ventricular fibrillation. So once you already received a patient with electrical burn do not hesitate to remove the clothing also because if there is still an active pathway in the body that may also cause a thermal burn okay so you need to remove all the clothings of the patient and change it to hospital gowns once you receive already the patient you may do a heart intervention h heart rhythm alertness wherein you need to be stay alert on ventricular fibrillations as well as cardiac and respiratory arrest causing by electric shock if you saw that the patient is already having a ventricular fibrillation or worse there's already a problem with the pulse and breathing do not ever hesitate to initiate CPR as soon as possible. The next one is E. Electrical burns that ignites patient's burn may also cause thermal burns. So remember that if you received a patient suffering from electrical burn, do not forget to remove their clothing and do some necessary interventions. A is that assess for the cost of injury. In here, get the estimated voltage where the patient was exposed to, the frequency of the electricity, the duration of the exposure to the electrical burning. Why? This is good in order for you to have a prompt treatment of that burn. R. Respond accordingly to the needs. If the patient suffered or has a history already of electrical burn, do not ever forget to do or initiate ECG because if there is the presence of ventricular fibrillation, you are going to do CPR and of course apply the ACLS guidelines. So what do I mean here in the respond accordingly to the needs? If the patient is already pulseless or VF, initiate CPR. If the patient is already suffering from respiratory complications, do not forget to assess for any smoke inhalations, okay? In the electrical injury or in electrical burning, that may also lead to thermal burning. And the smoke inhalation may be present during the thermal injury. The last one is the tissue damage from electrical burn is difficult to assess because there is an internal destruction along the conduction pathway and that is usually greater than the surface burn would indicate. So here in the electrical burning or electrical burns, don't forget our nursing management with an acronym of HEART. Remember your heart if you have electrical burn patient. Heart rhythm alertness, you need to stay alert. Electrical burns that ignites patient's burn may cause also thermal burn. Assess the cause of the injury. 
respond accordingly to the needs. And tissue damage from electrical burn is difficult to assess. So what if it's difficult to assess? What are you going to do? You can do degree classification methods. While doing your assessment and intervention to the patient, do not forget that you are still handling burn patient. But as I've mentioned earlier, electrical burn has a unique characteristic from the other burn injuries. So if we say electrical burn injuries, do not ever forget to choose your heart interventions, okay? So I guess that's all for this video. If you need some help in nursing examinations, you can check the other videos that I have on this channel. And of course, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.